Hello, welcome to another episode of Lives in Live, where we talk about all things sustainability, apparel design, and startups. As a reminder, Lives in makes durable clothing so you can own less and live more. We're interested in creating high quality items so you're able to spend more time outside and less time managing things in your life and you know, having high quality items that allow you to get out, get outside, be more versatile, and last longer so we stand behind our products with a lifetime uh, manufacturer warranty and also repair and replacement program really emphasizing that repair so that people can keep their clothing longer keep things out of the landfill own less live more spend more time outside and keep what matters uh, tonight we have a really great episode where we're actually bringing on black elk media you can see them down there waving I'm gonna wave back uh, we're gonna talk about all things um, photography all things videography we're going to talk about our video shoot out in Colorado last year all the things that went into that logistically the gear that they use um, we're going to talk about how they go about doing what they do and just every time they pull that lens cap off their camera they make amazing video all right Daniel you can quit requesting for a minute I'm gonna let you join after we get done with the intro but you're doing great my wave what's up Mac Mac welding vet you've been on here every time that's awesome thanks for being here um, I'd like to remind y'all that we have a Kickstarter coming up. Um, so it's Flex Canvas Pants version two. We're actually, we refined these, we've updated them based on a lot of feedback from you, our fans. Um, they are gonna be made with organic cotton, recycled polyester. We've changed the button to be more to higher quality. We've increased the pocket depth. We have uh, changed and edited the fit to be more uh, flattering on the upper side. We have, uh, made the knife pocket bigger and deeper. All these things sound small, but we're able to make it more environmentally friendly. We're able to make it uh, better fitting, more refined, and a better product based on your feedback. And that's the kind of brand we are, and it's the kind of company we're looking to build, is really bring you into this process, make our products better each time, and do, do as much as we can to uh, live up to our mission to make durable, versatile outdoor clothing for people who, wanna, uh, who value experiences more than stuff. Um, I'd like to remind you all again, too, that this is for you to participate. I'm going to be asking Daniel and Trent questions from Black Elk, but this is a time for you to actually get on here and ask questions. Ask if you're interested in photography. We're going to go into gear. You can ask them about um, how they go about uh, landing clients, how they work with people, how we do logistics. Also, just uh, you can also ask about Livzen and our clothing and our apparel. If you want an update on the Kickstarter, if you want an update on the products, um, if you have any questions about uh, sustainability, apparel, startups, anything, this is a time for you to put that in there and we'll get to those questions too. Um, we are doing this every Thursday, as you can see at 6 p.m. Central Time. So these are going to be regular. Next week we're actually bringing on one of our customers to talk about his field reports of the Flex Canvas pants, living in a van and traveling around the country with the one pair of pants and he's going to be on here talking about that. So that'll be next week. Looking forward to that one. Um, and also, last reminder is if you missed this, which obviously you're, you're here right now, but if, if you want to tell people about it, they missed it, and you want to show people what Libsyn's all about, these are uploaded to YouTube after the fact. And within a couple of days after each episode, we're gonna, you'll be able to go back and watch them. You can go to our YouTube channel now, subscribe to it to get notifications whenever we go uh, upload a new video, but you can watch the backlog of these Libsyn Lives and catch up to where we are right now. So, without any more further ado, I'm gonna invite Daniel from Black Elk to, to join the live. He's, uh, he's already asked about three or four times and, yes. and now we're gonna let him in here. And in the meantime, I'm gonna be waving at y'all. All right, look, Black Elk Media sent a request. That's two. I am. Go live. We're getting there. Oh, we're almost there. That's right. Oh, wow. Uh oh. <laughs> a little behind the scenes. Uh oh, it's gonna get crazy. Yeah, we're gonna do some audio. <clears throat> All right, how's it going, everybody? I'm leaving Andrew over there. Bye, Andrew. I'm gonna go to the other room that Trent is in right now, so bear with me. Right, I'm gonna be waving to people I haven't waved to yet. Oh, you're lagging a little on bit? Here, by the way. That's, the, that's probably the biggest we've had at any one time on a video. I think that's totally uh, because of me and not you, Daniel, but I mean, we'll, we might give you a little bit of stuff for it, too. Oh, come on. All right. We're getting there. All right. We're here. All right. Then we got Daniel and Trent. 
there in another room here. We'll let, give them a little time for their Wi-Fi to figure out where they are and stop being looking like a, a pixelated video from 1991. We uh, look we look good over here. All right, you look great all the time. Oh, until now. <laughs> Technical difficulties. This is how you know that it's a, a truly live uh, broadcast. Live yeah. Broadcast. All right, we should be good now. Cool. Back up a little bit so y'all are both uh, in the frame, Daniel, or at least you know get get comfortable with each other. Act like you like each other. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can uh, can y'all in the audience here throw a little uh, emoji, thumbs up, uh, something if you can if the audio is coming through good. Tell us that the video is okay. Uh, always give us that mic check when we're talking, and we'll know that we're being heard loud and clear. All right, Ryan. Thank you. Oh, we got a thumbs up. We're good. All right, cool. We got all sorts of emojis, right on. Uh, cool. All right, so the first thing I want uh, to start off with is just an introduction of y'all. Go, you know, your first name, but also talk about Black Elk and the company and what y'all do. Okay, so I'm Daniel Mitchell. I'm one of the co-owners of Black Elk Media. This is I'm Trent Sugg. I'm also a co-owner of Black Elk Media. <clears throat> um, we travel all over the world making promotional content for people just like Andrew and that's pretty much what we do. Yeah, so we got our start in adventure filmmaking. Um, we actually met Andrew at his, his previous employment. I don't know how to say that other than that. Um, well, you, yeah. where, where was that? It was at Fayette Hill. Oh. Clothing company, yeah. So uh, Trent was actually the staff photographer plus some other stuff that he was doing there, but he had been there for like five or six years. Five years, oh, yeah. Yeah, and then I came on as the staff videographer uh, for about a year at the end of his time there. So we had like a, a one year overlap. And <clears throat> prior to that, we didn't know each other. And we just knew that we both liked photography and videography. And we thought it was time to uh, serve other clients and not just, you know, serve one client. So we started Black Elk Media almost three and a half years ago. And since then, it's been kind of a whirlwind learning how to run a business and all that jazz. But um, basically, like Trent was saying, we, we do a lot of traveling nationally and work with a lot of ad agencies in the area and a lot of small businesses in Northwest Arkansas. So um, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of Black Elk Media. And we've got some other employees I want to give a shout out to. We've got <coughs> Ian Cable who's creeping here. Uh, we've got <laughs> Alex Gorski, uh, Logan Dial. And oh, I see you, Logan. That rounds out a solid team for us. Is that Logan, Hood, hood Rat, Fam Dog, Logan? Yep, that's Logan, the one and only. Right on. All right, well, while we're uh, in between the next question, I want to wave or uh, welcome Sloppy Tunas, uh, Oceana <laughs> America, Morse Code, Hood Rat, Fam Dog, Logan, uh, On the Road and Off Joined. Let's see, and all the rest of y'all on here, thank you for being live with us. Daniel, just get a little closer to Trent. We're, our chairs are touching, yeah, man. We, this is it. Here. Okay, maybe you can get in How about slides. this? How about this? I'll be big and he can be smaller in the background. I'll just lean in like that. That works. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, because we're talking about photo, video, and because that's what y'all do, and uh, we don't want to hear me talking this whole time, I would like y'all to uh, tell our audience a little bit about the equipment that you use. Um, talk about your, your cameras. Talk about your uh, other you know, supporting equipment, all the, all the gear you have. Uh, drones, uh, software, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Sorry, we got people leaving the office right now. Um, so I'll start with videography. Um, so we used to shoot with Canon, but we switched to Panasonic probably two years ago. Um, we shoot with the Panasonic GH5. And uh, on that front, we still shoot with Canon glass any chance that we have, uh, just because we really like Canon glass. And I mean, that kind of leads into the photography cameras, which Trim will touch on, but <clears throat> yeah, started with Mark IIs. Um, we had about three of them at one point. We whittled those down. We have a, a Mark IV now, as well as a, a 6D. Um, yeah, and that rounds out the, the photo cameras. That's pretty much our, our workhorse, workhorse, workhorses for that. Yeah, and since, since like, we were already uh, coming from a Canon background, it made sense for us to use like speed boosters with our video equipment to run Canon glass. So, um, what's that's a speed the, booster? It's so it's it's an adapter that allows you to mount a lens that's not from the same body to 
like your camera body. But yeah, why do you also like, has, what, what's the preference for Canon over any other glass? Uh, you know, this is probably, this could get really technical and, and we could talk about it for a long time, but honestly, I think it's just that that's what we were shooting with. Well, and you know, <clears throat> lenses aren't, ex aren't cheap. So, I mean, once you're invested in something like that, it's, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, you know, to jump ship and go with somebody else. Exactly. You know, so we were already heavily invested in it. They're great glass. Yeah. Um, and glass can be like, it's crazy because, you know, glass can be like, you can go buy a $50 used lens and then there's a $50,000 lens that's the same focal length somewhere in the world. So, we, like, investing in the Canon already, it didn't make sense to switch to anything else. So, that's... Uh, while we're on that, so I'll just go, I want to go ahead and uh, uh, say hi to people that joined in, do more of what you dig. Is actually who's going to be on here next week, I believe, and be talking about the... Uh, the uh, experience on the road, but he also said he really likes these guest sessions. And I wanted to address that real fast. Like, you know, this is the future of how we're going to do these every once in a while to be me and <clears throat> Chris by ourselves. We're going to bring in people that we work with, people that are close to lives and people that are interesting to talk to. So you guys can get, you know, hear a more well-rounded view of, of really what you're interested in and kind of tune in and out if you're into photography or if you're into apparel design or those kind of things. Um, one of our, uh, uh, Mac Welding Fab said, "What's a good shutter count for a used Canon 70D?" Ooh, that's a that's a trend question. Um, I mean, what, I mean, generally the the ex the expectancy on Canon shutter counts is the life expectancy is around 150 thousand clicks. Um, used, I mean, I would feel comfortable buying anything, you know, up to 60 thousand. Um, I mean, for instance, we. I had um, one of my Mark II's that I shot with. I had, we had two of them at the time, so I didn't use them one all the time. But it had, you know, 60,000 shutter count after, you know, four or five years of using it. And it's still, I still use it. Yeah. Um, it's still great. Now, on the other hand, our, uh, our Mark IV, for instance, is over 150,000 shutter count. Um, and the shutter squeaks a little bit. I mean, but it still works just fine. So it's, it's really... It's a toss up. I mean, if you're wanting warranty work, you're probably not going to get that anyways on a used camera. So just go for it. Right on. Uh, thanks. We got people answer. asking about skincare regimes. Yeah, so what's Trent, what's your skincare regimen? <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> Don't do this to me, Bryce. Uh, well, back to equipment. Uh, what do y'all use to edit? What do you get those, those saucy shots? <sighs> so we're kind of a split camp. As far as photo goes, all Lightroom. Um, with, you know, a little bit of Photoshop in there for certain touch-ups and stuff. But on the video front, uh, I think, like, probably two-thirds of our team uses Final Cut. And then the other third uses Adobe Premiere. And that's who's purely the, just... Who's the odd one out? Do what? Who's the odd one out? What, so Trent <laughs> and Logan, um, Logan. Logan loves Premiere. Yeah. And I... I've always used Final Cut, so that's why I stayed with it. And Alex uses it. Ian uses it. Um, I think it's more intuitive. And I do too, for the record. <laughs> yeah. Nice. But um, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. See what? See Logan? What's he saying? Good layoff. <laughs> uh, all right, well, let's go through another question here from the audience. Have you had any experience from the new Fuji films XT3? Not the newest, but I'll let Ian talk about. Um his experience with Fuji cameras, he's, he's dealt with them a little more than he's still right. lurking back there. <laughs> there he is. What's up guys? I'll switch roof. Yeah. Um, I haven't had any use of with any of the newer Fujis, but I had an X pro one and I thought it was a fantastic camera. Um, it, it wasn't the highest megapixel count, but it was super sharp. The lenses are great. It's super small, great travel camera. It never let me down. I got rid of it a couple months ago, but, it was pretty fantastic. Was that that smaller body camera that you used to carry that had just yeah. amazing, yeah, yeah. I remember. It looks like an old film camera. Most mm -hmm. people think it's a film camera, and that's kind of why I like it, but, you know, yeah. it's pretty great. Uh, I'm going to ask Trent this one because you do a lot of outdoor photography, but Ryan Westy wants to know, any tips for natural lighting in the outdoors? Oh, man. That's such a, that's such a tough one to dive into. Um, well, so, I mean, you know, Polarizers and things and ND filters can play a big role in helping you, you know, get the kind of lighting you're looking for. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what was that? Waterfalls. Yeah. Yeah. If you're shooting waterfalls. And if you're shooting waterfalls or anything with, like, serious highlights. Um, the other part with that is, you know, obviously 
the time of day you're shooting is a huge part. Um, What's the best time to shoot? Uh, early morning and into the very evening, the golden and blue hour. Um, those are going to be your best times to shoot. Unless it's overcast, then you, you can shoot all day. Um, so you're really looking to minimize those highs and lows from like leaves and shadows and bright, bright harsh sunlight. And right, light. you get a softer light. Yeah, um, it's more forgiving. And I think the morning and evening time, like Trent was saying, like even if it's cloudy outside, you usually get just like a general soft cast over everything. But it's really nice to shoot with low light coming from one direction, especially like with the sun refracting through the, you know, the ozone, stuff like that. You get all those crazy colors and it's yeah. that's when you get that really cinematic stuff all right well i got another question for y'all we'll take it in a slightly different direction we're, i see uh b tyler's question there uh we're gonna save that one to close up the show i mean i know uh, that we'll, we'll get there we can think about that uh mm -hmm. all right so i want to talk about the colorado shoot so <clears> first <throat> of all before we talk about it it's a good time to plug that daniel has edited an amazing vlog it's like 30 minutes of behind the scenes footage from our Kickstarter video shoot in Colorado last summer. Um, if you know us, you'll love it. If you don't know us, we think you'll love it too. It's pretty, you know, there's some funny moments. It's got uh, good shots. It shows kind of how, how the, how the sausage is made and, and uh, you know, how, what it looks like behind the scenes. So with that, tell us, tell me a little bit um, about the Colorado shoot. I think a good way to start and go into that would be just who went, what equipment did you bring? What was our rough plan of action? Right. So I think uh, I'm going to start with the plan first. Mm -hmm. So the plan was to go to Colorado and to shoot in as many different environments as we could over the course of like, I think it was like five, five or six days. It was five shoot days. I think it was like six or seven. Yeah. yeah so was a week, it was like a week and we wanted to shoot in pretty much any of the terrain that Colorado had just because we wanted to show a lot of diverse shots in the Kickstarter. And Colorado yeah. has, a, <clears throat> you know, it's a, a good place to go to get that type of diverse terrain. So we worked backwards from there and just kind of plotted things out on the map. You know, like, hey, it'd be cool if we shot at an alpine lake. So, oh, this I know about this alpine lake, this one's pretty. Let's, let's have this be one of the shoot days. And then it was like, oh, well, maybe we need like some, you know, kind of deserty dune shots. Well, the great sand dunes, so oh, well, that's too far of a drive. What can we fit in between there? And so we kind of worked backwards from there. And mm -hmm. uh, Black Elk's been pretty lucky in the past because during summer, we usually get to take the, the entire crew on some big trip mm -hmm. uh, that it's as much of, what's the word that when people get together and their their employees, <laughs> come, it's Your company retreat. 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 Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a company retreat. Um, but yeah, yeah so... Uh, yeah, th this past summer, it, that was that trip for us. So we had the in entire crew there and um, two vehicles, and we kind of just hit all the spots. In hey, wait, Colorado. so last year we had, what, it was two Subarus, right? Two, uh, like, lifted off-road Subarus? Yeah, well, mine's, yeah. Not, mine's not lifted, but. Oh, yeah. Well, well, and you don't have yours anymore, so. Well, I know. We're, now we're driving around in two Toyotas. You know, we, 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 I guess we yeah, grew up. Yeah. You know, I don't know what happened there. Hashtag Overlander, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hashtag wannabe Overlander. Um, yeah, so then, as far as equipment goes, I mean, we, we brought pretty much everything. Yeah. Um, and when he says everything, that's that's drones, you know, everything from that to stabilizer, gimbals, um, photo, video cameras. <clears throat> um, I don't, we didn't take any lighting, did we? Well, outside of your little... No, yeah, just, we didn't take much lighting. And basically, we stuck to the schedule, which is hard. When we, you're we took an extra day at Jones Pass. Yeah, anybody has been there. It's beautiful. We ended up taking an extra day. I got a day, half day mountain biking at uh, Winter Park. Winter Park, and, and they went up to the top of what was the peak? Mount uh, Highest Road. Mount Evans. Road in a, yeah, so we took an extra day Park. there. So we went. The rough schedule was Fort Collins to uh, shoot at our design and sourcing studio, and then yeah. we went up to. Did we go straight to Vaughn Lake? Yeah, we went to Vaughn yeah. Lake. We went to Vaughn Lake. And then we went to Jones Pass, right? But we took right. a detour to do shooting that day, I think, at that river. Where we got no, that was on the way down to the dunes. It yeah. was yeah. so we went to Jones, Lake to Jones Pass, and then Jones yeah. Pass to the dunes. Yeah, and you'll you'll see all this on the vlog if you if you watch it. Like we we go up and try to go up as hard as we can on Jones Pass, get stopped by a glacier, you know, as yeah. uh, as Bear Grylls would call it. Yeah, glacier. Yeah. Um, it's twenty seven minutes, so like 
like sit back and and pop a few cold ones. Yeah, uh, it's on. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, we can just watch it right now. Yeah. Maybe drink a couple before you start. It'll make it. You know. Yeah, like, actually do that. That's actually a good uh, good bit of advice. All yeah. right. Uh, so then we go from Jones Pass to Great Sand Dunes National Park, and that was the first day of the trip that it didn't rain. Daniel, you want to talk about rain and kind of its inspiration on you musically? <clears throat> yeah. So. Um, as the Black Elk guys know, and, and Andrew here, um, I'm not a musician and I'm not a singer, but sometimes, you know, I get that call and I just, I just start singing. And we were on Jones Pass and it had been raining for like, it seemed like 20 years. And uh, we had an inside joke on the trip where we'd say like, lives in large, um, lives in well. And so I just started singing Lives In In The Rain and everyone got into it. We had backup vocals, bass, Logan was beatboxing. And I mean, it was a good like five, 10 minute sesh on the side of a mountain while it's raining in the middle of, you know, nowhere, Colorado. Yeah, so what is what is that like minute, like 17 of the video, you'll get like a two to three minute music video. Yeah, there's a, a, there's a music video in the middle rain. of the well, BTS. And it seems like the way the, the vlog is cut that we sang that for Hours. It, hours. <laughs> it, it didn't happen that way, but it seemed that way. Yeah. Actually, no, we sang it for hours. Yeah. So we, uh, so we ended up in Great Sand Dunes National Park, uh, shot around a little bit there, did some interview stuff there, uh, tried to get to the top of the dunes. Most of us dipped out and let Daniel and Logan try to make it to the top. I we don't all like... think you made it. No, not at all. We didn't get close. <laughs> Never. It was it was crazy. Yeah, but it didn't rain, so it was good. It did rain that night, though. It sprinkled. Uh, let's see. So uh, before we we'll go into our recent shoot, but I want to talk about this because y'all are pretty good at it. Dana, you might want to take this one, actually. From Danger, uh, Dang Potter Familias. I bet, I bet I messed that up pretty bad. Startup question. How did your companies approach logos, and what are your criteria? We're currently rebranding an NWA coffee shop, which that's awesome. So, yeah. You want to talk about logo design, Dana? Because I feel like you spend a lot of time Tinker. Yeah. Place. Well, so for, I don't know how to get these comments to go away. Anyway. Um, we know you're back there. Yeah. So, um, so for our logo, we actually uh, consulted with a friend who was a graphic designer and we kind of just gave her what we were thinking. And at that point we, we had kind of had a conversation that whatever came back, we were just going to, you know, do a hot take on it, like, oh, I like this, I don't like this, just purely based off of feeling. And <clears throat> the original logo that we had, uh, I think was a strong one. I mean, it's, it's like, it holds a special place in our hearts for sure, because it's our, it's our first rendition of like when we started up. But um, yeah, after that, we uh, just tweaked the text a little bit just to make it a little bit more modern. But Oh, I forgot what the question is. Just Later, people are texting. Go ride that group ride. Oh, there we go. How do you approach uh, logos? Talk about like the iteration of a logo too, because you know I think everybody designs a logo and then they they kind of see what they like and don't like about it and want to make it, right. make edits. Um, so how are you looking at that with Black Elk's logo? So I think we're actually going to be in the process of updating our logo again um, within like the next year or two, and I think something that you need to be really mindful of when you're designing a logo is, is how it looks from any distance. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think a lot of people take that into consideration, but if you think of a lot of the most recognizable brands, um, it's not necessarily even just that the logo, like everyone knows what the Apple logo is, right? I mean, but, and I don't think it's just because they're, they're popular. I think it's like, if you see it, you know, whether you're close or far away, that like, oh, that's Apple. And well, I think, I think <clears throat> the logo, it, like no one's like, oh, that Apple logo is so dope. Right. You know, it's it's more about making a lasting impression. Making a and you know, what you're doing, you know, is the ultimate branding. You right. know, the logo is only a stretch so, of that. I'll speak to this a little bit because uh, when it comes to the lives and logo is, you know, it's not very hard to see that we, you know, pulled a lot from the mountain lexicon. So like right. in the outdoor industry, a mountain in your logo is not necessarily um, unique. Right. 
Yeah. But there's a lot going on in that logo, and, and a lot of times uh, people that are super fans really like this. And uh, but you know it means a lot to me, which was we, one we started with a triangle, and so you kind of harken back to uh, like freshman year psychology. If you took it, you got Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? So you have like your yeah. food, water, shelter, clothing is your first level of needs before you can move up to the next one, all the way up to you know self actualization and, and becoming enlightened or happy, you know, happy. Um, and, paid attention in that class right so i wanted to i started with a triangle i knew it was gonna be a triangle because we were making clothing and a core belief of this brand is that you have to wear it right you don't really have a choice so to me that means that the clothing that you wear should be you know high quality and functional be a representation of what you believe and really stand up to the job that, that it's supposed to do well and uh take, take that one step further we really want clothing that can be worn in all sorts of variety you know environments without having to movement that that ties back to sustainability if you can have more versatile clothing then you can own less clothing and less things right. to be made in the world that being said so i want to start with that triangle uh wanted to have a mountain lexicon like a mountain logo in there because we are a new um uh outdoor you know brand and, and that kind of harkens back to a, a heritage feel you know back from the 70s and 80s whenever you know 60 or sorry 70s and 80s when outdoor brands the legacy guys kind of popped up uh, to give us some some trust, that logo establishes a little bit more trust in, in the in, in the fans' eyes because it looks familiar, right? Right. And also, I wanted it to be you know that the way you know the, the I spent a lot of time with the um, just size of those you know the size of the you know, the lines of the mountains in there, matching the exact size of the of the uh, triangle, matching the exact width and size of the lives and logo, and then we made right. little tweaks to like the way it works. So like. All that stuff means something. Um, even the, the logo on in, in the inside means something, the triple peaks, and I like the way that it that goes. So logos are important. Um, they are, you know, it's, it's just being considered. I don't, I don't have anything else to say on that. I'll explain mine, but I won't try to make any grand claims about logos in general. Right. Uh, no, I mean, I think just the last thing on logos, um, for me, like, I really do like simple logos, like, just pretty minimal. And you were talking about the line width and stuff. I feel like weight has a lot to do with a good logo and it needs to seem balanced if that makes sense yeah every design i, I did hire a design i had the logo like i drew it on the board and then we kind of worked it up but i actually hired a designer and said hey sign off on this and he's like we're gonna make it really thin and like made really tall thin letters and made it look like a makeup brand and i was like no and every time i fought back he's like no this is this should be thin anyway it, it it comes down to what you want what you feel comfortable with yeah for sure um, so let's see. hope that answered your question yeah, so we lost do more of what you did do a group ride. Respectable. Uh, thanks for signing off. Product question from Ryan Westy. And I saw someone else earlier talked about women's pants. So are the pants and the fleece unisex or are they just men? Um, good question. The pants, we actually have, uh, I think now I know five women that wear the pants regularly. They're not made for women. Um, there is a difference in the way that you design, you know, uh, pants for men and women. The shape of from waist down is pretty different. But uh, there are women that are wearing them and really like them. We do have on our roadmap to make a women's fit of the pants because I think that uh, women need much better clothing, especially for not for the outdoors, <clears throat> uh, not necessarily in general, but like the outdoor clothing for women just doesn't look fit or really wear the same way that anything you'd see someone in outside of a hiking trip. So I think there's an opportunity there. and I think there's a need for it. Um, the fleece, though, is very much it's a it's a slimmer fit. Um, slimmer arms because it's meant to be a layering piece that you can put under a jacket. It's got a very, uh, very unisex fit. Looks great on men, looks great on women. It'll, you know, it's, it's, it's very much a unisex piece. Um, <laughs> Logan wants to show by the scooter. Um, we can take, we can take a, a 30 second break and show everyone the scooter. Yeah. Hey, it is. Where's the scooter? Do a trick. <laughs> all I do is crash. That's all I got. Are you happy, Logan? I think Logan's happy now. Logan's happy. Yeah, he said thanks, dudes. All right. Uh, coffee shop people said good feedback. Thanks, guy. I love those logos too. Yeah, thank you. What a what coffee shop? Oh well, yeah, I didn't, I, you can you can DM us later if you don't want to say. It, but I'd like to. Yeah, if you want to, if you well, I guess they don't want to say what they're redoing. But if you do, you can throw it in there. If not, that's cool. Um, <laughs> all right dude everybody loves the scooters especially chris yes. all right um we will ask we're gonna i'm gonna let's go and do <laughs> comments are lit <laughs> all right 
Uh, now let's talk about what we've been doing for the last couple of weeks for Livesin specifically, the shoots we've been doing. So where have we been? Uh, where have we been shooting? And what have y'all been doing? And what, what's the content you're, that our that our fans are going to be seeing here very soon? So we're working on the the second version of the Kickstarter. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I don't know if everyone here is familiar with the the first Kickstarter. Uh, hopefully, but um, yeah, I think what the goal was like thirty thousand. Thirty, yeah. I mean, it ended up at like seventy nine or something like that, right? Yeah, a little right under seventy nine thousand. Yeah, our goal. <clears throat> um, so that was our that was our fourth Kickstarter that we've done, and somehow all of them have reached their goals. So I'm knocking on wood right now. But anyway, um, for the second one, we uh, we decided to keep it local to show off, you know, some of the Ozarks and uh, kind of the urban element of Northwest Arkansas. So um, we shot in five different locations, and they all have kind of a different theme. And uh, run through them just real fast so we can, you know, we uh, we're on campus with mountain bikes. Um, we're up in Onyx and Bentonville. Um, showing kind of the, the uh, what do they call that? Working man. Yeah, like five. the shared space for working, you know. Um, and then we uh, go to Modus in Fayetteville, the architecture firm, and uh, do some some shots there. with Not just an architecture firm, by the way. This is like these guys elevate architecture to another level. They use reclaimed materials, a lot of metal. Yeah. Uh, no, charred sure. wood, just amazing, amazing. Yeah, stuff. you should check them out. All these places, for sure. Yeah, we went into their shop today and watched them do some welding and uh, make some stuff for uh, a new uh, performance theater that's going in downtown. Yeah. All. They were actually making tables out of wood they reclaimed from trees that were cut down on the property to make that building. So Yeah, I think uh, their focus is sustainability, if I'm not mistaken. It is. So yeah. what? Uh, where else did we shoot? Um, then... Y'all went out to... Uh, uh, we went out to uh, Big Bluff. Um, Buffalo River. Yep, yeah, out in the Buffalo River area. And then um, oh, yeah. uh, Horseshoe Canyon Ranch did some climbing. Yeah, Horseshoe Canyon Ranch is some of the best climbing in the United States. They do 24 hours of horseshoe hell every year. Yeah, uh, people, that. people uh, go and, and climb over 100 routes in 24 hours and, and join the 100 Yeah, it, it's a hidden gem. I mean, Alex Honnold's climbed there. Um, there's did he hold the record, Alex Honnold, for a he while? He did. So. I think it's been broken since yeah. uh he did it back in 2011 i think it has yeah but there's a it was yeah. he and tommy called very, up, actually very beautiful out there so yeah that <clears throat> that kind of rounds up the what's the what's the concept and creative for the the, the kickstarter video is obviously going to be me talking about the 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 new the new pants and 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 recapping what happened last time but what's the creative for the actual brand video talk about <clears throat> that. i mean basically we're we're trying to it's almost a day in the life of lives in pants and, uh, you know, that's what, we're, that's what we really wanted to highlight. Andrew talks about it all the time. I know you guys see him on here talking about it, but he, he talks about it off camera, too, all the time. Like, he wants, he wants his pants to be where you're, you know, you're on campus and you're leaving class and you can go hop on a mountain bike, uh, shred a downhill section, get some mud on them, turn around, go to a coffee shop, bang out a few emails, and then – you know, fast forward and do do yard work, be at home, do some carpentry in your garage, and then your buddies call you or you have a, you know, a happy hour somewhere and you can go into a bar and people are like, whoa, uh, those are really good looking pants. What are those? And, uh, you know, then maybe finish it off with going camping that weekend all in one pair of pants. So um, yeah. that was kind of the, the creative element behind that. Yeah, so when we're going for like seamless transitions too, so like each one of those scenes kind of has a fade in, fade out into the next scene, and I've been pushing Daniel to do some uh, some interesting things there. We'll see yep. how, how it works out. Yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, yeah, it's cool. It's we got some fault if it doesn't work. Yeah, <laughs> well, we got some questions. Uh, are we going to see a restock in the t-shirts soon, and could we possibly see a heavy cotton t-shirt in the future? So we're not going to see. I don't think we're going to see a restock of any of the shirts that we've sold so far. We've gone from a fully recycled blend that was a recycled polyester recycled cotton love the sustainability aspect of it but over time it has too much pilling i don't like the way it's aged after a bunch of washes so we went from there to a 100 percent organic cotton heavy t-shirt um if we do reproduce we'll do that because i really like the fabric it's one of those shirts that's just going to never wear out but i'm not 100 percent sold on the uh the fit uh it 
if people like it, we'll put it on another poll. We'll reproduce that one because it is a great, a great shirt. It just doesn't fit the way that I would like it. We have been working on, I actually have a prototype for a t-shirt and a Henley in a 100% organic cotton, really smooth, buttery, soft, great t-shirt that I actually wore the whole time we were filming this video. It's <clears throat> awesome when you're outside on a hot day to wear cotton. We can get it done on another episode, but cotton and linen are really great materials for a hot day because they, they, they do they breathe well and when they get a little bit damp they actually cool you down so we may make our own we may restock uh, it'll be on instagram if we do that let's see unrelated question from ethan clark he said, he said unrelated question i didn't say that should i get into mountain biking or dirt biking both are expensive so i can't afford both but i'll let you guys choose for me i've i'm, I'm definitely well, first of all, I will just caveat with this. You do, do what you feel the most passionate about, but I would definitely push you towards mountain biking. Um, we are happy. We, I mean, there are great places to bike all over the country. We happen to be in a, an area of the country that is building more trail per day than anywhere else in the world. And it's professionally built single track with just amazing trails. So I've been mountain biking since I was a little kid. We used to go to Colorado in the summer times and downhill. <clears throat> But I just love mountain biking. It's definitely the, the culture around mountain biking is pretty incredible. Like the after ride beers, the group ride aspect, the uh, the the you know the, the, the social media side of it, the people, the community is just great. Uh, dirt biking is really cool too. It, it's a little bit different of a culture that I don't uh, I don't I'm not as into. You know so. Thank I think it's probably more expensive over time. Yeah, I would agree. Probably, yeah, probably when anything with a motor. But I'm not, yeah, mountain biking. It can be expensive. Yeah. I don't know that a top tier mountain bike isn't the same price as a dirt bike, but you know, probably is. The excel, I guess the the you gotta have like a trailer for a dirt bike and all that kind of stuff. So right. maybe, maybe overall is a little less. Hey, no one takes gas to go. I'll throw this shower thought out there for you, okay? <laughs> like, bikes are cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're human powered. Think about that for a so, second. Uh, bikes, bicycles, bicycles. Yes. Maybe. All right, we're gonna wrap up pretty quick. I'm gonna uh, answer Ryan here. Any plans on coming out with wool shirts or base layer? Um, oddly enough, not all of you will know this, but the first product we actually designed and started sampling was a merino wool uh, polyester blend shirt that actually we've gone through. I think <clears throat> we're at sample prototype five. Um, the fat, we've had issues with the fabric sourcing for it because we've tried to cross source this amazing fabric we found from different suppliers that are easier to work with. We just can't match the quality with anybody, with anybody else, but which basically means we're going to go with the, with the fabric that is the best. We will release that eventually. It's uh, right now our eyes are set on, on really uh, innovating and, and expanding our options within bottoms and create uh, shorts and then have a super flex canvas line, which we may have the overalls coming out too. And then we're going to have this uh, more athletic line with a lightweight ripstop, recycled polyester blend or nylon um, that we're going to go to with stretch, like really cool features on that. So probably those will come before we go into more technical tops. You will see hats and tees in that time too, though it will be sustainable and we will find you know the right one for you. And I want to close with um, Bailey's question. Oh, great. <laughs> I'm going to... I remember it, but I'm going to try to find it real fast, too. Who would you eat first if you were stranded on an island? Yeah, if you were stranded on an island, who would you eat first? Let's just, for set set and setting here, um, let's imagine that it was the crew that went on the uh, Lives in Colorado shoot. That's the people on the island. Okay. Yeah. I want I want y'all to answer. Do you want us to answer? Yeah. yeah. Is this... Oh, yeah, for sure. Andrew. 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 Me? Yeah. Yeah. Well, why? Sorry, dude. Just because, just we think you, we think you actually perish first. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I feel like you'd want to go for someone with more meat on their bones, right? Well, we'll we'll, come I mean, that. we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll suffice for the time being, I suppose. I don't know. I'm pretty uh, kind of low body fat. I might be a little stringy on there. I don't know. I just don't know if it's the best choice. But that's just me. I mean, y'all, y'all, y'all can. I guess. I mean, we can make our own mistakes, right? Yeah. I mean, right, well, that's great. Uh, okay, that's I'm glad good. to hear that, uh, that, that that's the way it would go. I think it's probably something to do with a not a part of Black Elk Media. But that's okay. Uh, yeah, that's uh, really what it is. Cool. All right. We'll just read Ethan Clark's comment real fast. Sweet. I'll try mountain biking then. I live in Illinois. We're pretty much flat except for the Peoria area. Um, oh. Cross country is where it's at. And the other thing about mountain biking, too, is it gets you fit. And it makes yeah. it live longer because you're in better shape. So yeah, it's, just, it's hard, hard to beat. Uh, had a phone call coming through. 
All right. Uh, so I think that wraps it up for today. Thank overalls. you. Overalls. Overalls. What about them? Someone said overalls. You want to talk about your overalls? <laughs> oh, yeah. Someone did say it. Yeah. Well, uh, over, no, I'm not going to talk about them that much. Just okay, know so that they are being, uh, they're being developed and they're being tested by uh, a, a urban farmer who's doing a, a completely organic urban farm in the middle of Bentonville. And it, they, when I took them back from him to send back to the warehouse, I mean, not the warehouse, the factory for its second or third prototype, he was very upset that I took them from him. So they're going the right direction. Good. Uh, cool. Any, any, closing, any closing words? Uh, yeah. When, follow uh, Black Elk Media at Black Elk Media. Subscribe, subscribe to our YouTube uh, follow lives in subscribe to their YouTube. And then if you're really bored and you have absolutely nothing to do on Wednesday or Saturday nights, you can watch me race in the virtual world. Oh yeah. Da Daniel has a secret <laughs> life as a, uh, a semi or, or almost professional, what is it? Gran Turismo driver? Gran Turismo, baby. Nationally ranked. Uh, I do want to sign off with a reminder that we do have a Kickstarter coming up. We haven't uh, announced the date yet, but it'll be in about, uh, two to three weeks, and we're going to be launching the updated, more eco-friendly, more refined version of the Flex Canvas Pants V2, and we're going to need y'all's help to get that done. So uh, thank you for y'all that just joined in. Join us uh, this time or at 6 o'clock on next Thursday to talk about all of our uh, experiences from some of our customers on the road with our Flex Canvas Pants, and uh, join us again to join in the conversation. Thank y'all yep. so much. Hey, thanks, guys. Thank y'all. Till next time. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how to turn it off. I do.